All right, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another video. Some people wanted to see short answer, so let's do short answer. Um, doing them all in one video would be insane. The video would probably go for an, like an hour. What we're going to do is today, we're just going to look at question one. Um, question one, where Vika went crazy asking people about the exchange rate with like 12 marks to that, um, as well as a couple other things. But um, we're going to go through question one. We're going to go through all the parts for it. I'm going to try and do each question, so I'll just do a video for question one, a video for question two, video for question three. can't remember how many questions there are. Exams are very long. But this also means you can very easily skip to the questions you want to look at uh, and see what I think would have been what VCAR wanted. Once again, this is my opinion. My opinion could be very, very wrong based on what VCAR wants. VCAR is going to VCAR, as I like to have in the um, little blurb there. But these are my opinions. I'm pretty confident in all of these. Um, and hopefully if you've been watching the videos before, a lot of these questions in this part are things that we kind of predict were going to come up. So question one, this question is weird because the prompt is in the question anyway. So using the prompt isn't really as relevant because the question's right there and has all of it in it. But describe how a lower cash rate in Australia puts downward pressure on the value of the exchange rate and how this might support activity across a range of industries. Essentially, they're asking you to talk about the exchange rate channel. Um, how that's going to have an impact. So exchange rate channel. And so when you talk about that, you're going to talk about if Australia's interest rate is lower relative to other countries. That means foreign investors withdraw. Um, so foreign investors withdraw their investments in search of a greater return elsewhere. And this then leads to a depreciation of the AUD. And then you've gone from that, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be a lot of your marks talking about how that happens there. So when the exchange, when the interest rate falls relative to overseas, foreign investors withdraw their money from Australian financial institutions in search of a greater return elsewhere. This puts downward pressure on the Australian dollar. And then how this might support activity across a range of industries. Well, you're going to talk about when the Australian dollar is lower, there is an increased um, demand for our exports because they're cheaper by comparison. And that means across industries, so like agriculture, mining, etc., our exports are cheaper. Therefore, there's going to be more international demand for them. So that's going to equal more international demand for exports. I dare say what they're going to want is, because this is across a range of industries, at least giving some examples of industries. So if you say um, China wanting our iron ore or a great demand for our barley exports, just like, um, or because it's just in theory here, you talk about the fact of a lower Australian dollar makes our tourism more attractive and therefore it's going to support that industry. But then you specifically say where it's going to support. I think you're probably going to get two marks from the exchange rate channel type description and two marks from that final bit about supporting various industries, because a lot of people might just say one industry and that won't be enough, so they won't get the full marks. That's my opinion for question 1A. Question 2, question 1B. Explain the likely impact of each of the following scenarios on the exchange rate. So if there's a favorable movement of the terms of trade, so if there's a favorable term movement of the terms of trade, so we've got favorable terms of trade, that means it's increasing. That means that we're either receiving more for our exports. So receiving, oh geez, that's not how you spell receiving. More for exports. Or, or and or, paying less for imports. And so what is that gonna mean for the exchange rate? So if we are receiving more for our exports or paying and or paying less for imports that and or as i said before very very important you probably also define terms of trade first so you'd say what an increase in the terms of trade means which is kind of leads into that um, and then you'd lead that into what that's going to mean for the exchange rate so that's going to mean there's more demand for the aud and then that is going to lead to an appreciation So 
that's going to get you to three marks there talking about those things so what a favorable movement in terms of trade means that's going to mean there's an increased demand for the australian dollar as we're either receiving more for exports or paying less for imports and that leads to an appreciation of the australian dollar now um, the second part of this one so how a slowdown in global economic growth is going to affect australia's exchange rate you'd kind of describe global global slowdown what that means and that is going to lead to a decrease in demand for our exports so then from that if there is less demand for our exports that means less demand uh, for the Australian dollar which is going to lead to a depreciation of the Australian dollar so if that's all good for three marks there um, so you got an appreciation on slide four depreciation here then we're going to answer some more exchange rate questions because I love them this year so explain how downward pressure on the Australia's exchange rate might influence each of the following so the Australian balance of payments on current account so we're talking about current account you'd vaguely define the current account here so like describe current account so a record of all the financial transactions coming into and out of Australia within the current period 12 months so you describe current account and then downward pressure of the Australian exchange rate so you talk about that so you'd say downward pressure equals a depreciation then that leads to if the AUD is decreased that is going to lead to increased export credits and decreased import debits and then that is either going to lead to an increased current account surplus or a decreased current account deficit and I always think it's important to say that last thing it's partly saying like if you're talking about current times that's going to increase a current account surplus because we are in a current account surplus or um, if we were in a current account deficit or it might move us to uh, it might decrease the size of that current account deficit then next up the same question for influencing Australia's material and non-material living standards so once again you have to talk about what um, a reduction in the exchange rate means for these things there's a few different effects here so um, in terms of material living standards you might talk about less purchasing power oh gee I think it's not my strong point today it's still pretty early it's less purchasing power and you could say that's going to decrease material living standards um, but you could also talk about the fact that downward pressure is going to increase employment due to increased demand for exports which is going to increase material living standards with non-material you could say decrease because less choice because you can't afford imports as much or you could say that they might improve because the employment and greater incomes is going to lead to decreased stress levels because people don't have to worry about their financial future um, stress levels and that leads to increased non-material living standards so really with this you could say either way with all of these um, as long as you justify it with good responses because it can be good or bad depending on which action you look at with it so hopefully if you went either way you had the right justifications and then you would have had no issue at all all right that is it for question one parts a b and c hopefully tomorrow because i'm pretty busy for the rest of the day i've got meetings and stuff because i'm an adult with responsibilities um hopefully this will be all right um another thing if you've no nah, don't worry about that i was gonna tell you to email the school if you've liked the content that i've done so far but that could get awkward after a while if they get too many but they probably won't um thank you for all the kind things people have been saying as well um but hopefully tomorrow i'll be back with either question two question two and three whatever i can fit in 
I hope this was helpful for you. Um, and I will see you next time. As always, have a wonderful day and I'll see you then. Bye.